Hey everybody, welcome back to Wiki Huge Sports. This is at the buzzer, and we're joined, as always, by Jack Tiernan, who is on the road, but not missing a day of work here for us. Jack, how you doing? Can't stop, won't stop, Brian. Uh, I've definitely been better, uh, not for travel reasons, obviously for self experience. Uh, yes. So we'll certainly get into it. Yeah. So if obviously if there's any technical issues or anything, Jack's on mobile. We're working. We're doing what we can here. We're trying to give you our thoughts on the Celtics. 101 to 89 loss of the first game of the second round to the Milwaukee Bucks. Jack, what'd you see out there? Uh, not much, and not much was good, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, ended up watching a lot of it on the flight uh, yeah. out here, but the, the unfortunate, I'm sure everyone was, why is this dude like reacting like this to his phone? But anyway, it was because I'm watching Jalen Brown and the rest of the backcourt for the most part, inclusive of Jason Tatum as well. Just huck up these gross threes in the first half that just were not necessary, um, at that point at least, uh, mm -hmm. because you can't get into the paint against their gigantic lineup of Giannis, Bobby Portis, and Brook Lopez. Um, yeah. But the threes just were not great. Uh, I think that ultimately is played a big role in their downfall. Yeah, it definitely seemed like both teams had a game plan, and that game plan was to force the other team to take as many threes as possible. And Milwaukee did it a lot better than the Celtics. Um, definitely. Or the 18 of 50 in this game. Yeah. Uh, that's not yep. going to get it that's done. That's the number. No, that's not going to get it done. Um, it was the, the timing of it wasn't ever really good, I felt like, especially in the first half. I felt like everybody's timing was off. And then mm -hmm. once, it, I mean, Give them some credit. They've had about a week off. They're a little mm -hmm. rusty. Um, but at the same time, it's not, I mean, it's too late because you have to claw back at that point. And then to claw back, you obviously have to make these plays. So you're trying a little harder. I don't know. It just seemed like definitely not a good game. The Bucks held us off very well. They're a good defensive team, too. Much credit to them. Definitely. Uh, but, yeah, not great. Yeah, so I guess um, one of the big storylines at the end of the first half was Marcus Smart. I thought Ooh. it was bad. Um, Me too. I, I was very, very concerned. Of course, defensive player of the year going to be a huge part of the Celtics' success in the series, if they have any. Um, and he went to the locker room holding his arm. Um, and then he really, I would say, didn't get back up to speed after that. I don't know what your thoughts no. on that are. I totally agree. Um, I think he was really, you know, something like that happens. It's a stinger right is what i saw that it was i thought initially dislocation and i'm like oh gee like yeah, that's not dude. usually good um because that you know that takes a bit you, you gotta get a reset you gotta get that mo bag it, it's kind of weird mm -hmm. um i mean he's back in right I, but i think you're right i don't think he he wasn't mentally there at that point you know was, i don't want to say he was checked out but like when that injury happens you're like oh god like what's wrong and then you come back in and you're still kind of reeling from the injury and i think mm -hmm. i want to I don't really think it played as big of a role as it should have. Granted, he didn't look great in the second half. Um, he just came down to the Bucks being great on defense on us, you know, making stops, making buckets, making threes particularly. Yeah. No, I mean, obviously the Bucks um, have had their injuries um, as well, so I can't really gripe about uh, yeah. our injuries. But uh, what what do you think the Celtics are going to have to do? going forward in this series like other than make threes i guess like how are they gonna adjust to not be forced to be kind of one-dimensional on offense very true um i think a lot of it is going to be revolving around that mid-range to mm -hmm. deep game of course just because again of how big that interior defense is between Giannis lopez and uh portis so, and then the problem was, of course, you have friggin' Drew Holiday patrolling the perimeter. So he's a great defender too. It's just it's not ideal for a team that isn't naturally offensively gifted like a lot of other teams are. I think the Celtics are a good offensive team. I don't like it's it's tough when you're forced essentially to be making shots on the perimeter because you can't drive to the net. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's going to have to get more physical is what it comes down to. I think these guys are going to not have to be afraid of getting under the basket, putting stuff up. Um, because they're going to get bumped once in a while, and if you can get Giannis in foul trouble, you're in great shape. You know, mm -hmm. So if you can start drawing these fouls, um, obviously a lot of calls didn't really go our way today, I felt. Um, I'm sure most of the Celtics fan base would think the same, but maybe that's some bias. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, got to be more physical, I think, under in the paint is what it comes down to, which I, is obviously tough against three huge guys. Really got to put your bodies on the line. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it was just a tough, um, like you said, Milwaukee, great on defense, um, yeah. very different from the Nets. Uh, you know, the Nets, not a great defensive team, uh, at least across the board. Uh, when we're not Milwaukee, I mean, they're defending champs for a reason. Um, they're mm-hmm. quite good. So we'll see. Um See what happens. I guess is there anything that Milwaukee did that the Celtics you think the Celtics can take advantage of going forward? Like certainly, Milwaukee's not going to be hitting these threes at the clip that they did in this game, right? That was exactly what I was going to say. Is keep them on the perimeter, let them feel mm. comfortable from this game, and then just hope that. I mean, eventually, it's what is it? Ebbs and flows, checks and balances, right? Mm. It's gonna. It's not going to be hitting them at the clip that they were hitting them today. Yeah. Um, I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah, no, I think the Celtics, they, they had a good defensive plan. Like, this is the similar to what they did to um, the Nets in the series before, yeah. to Durant. You know, they're not going to give up easy baskets. So it's going to come down to the Nets. Peripheral players could not make these threes. The Bucks they did this, this series. So we'll see what happens. Jack, is there anything else that you want to touch on that didn't bring up? Yeah. No, I think you touched it all, honestly. I think just we got to think about um, coming back. And unfortunately, we were, they were down Chris Middleton today. I know we talked about it. I don't think he'll be back this series. Um, mm. I I don't want him to be back. If that's how we played yeah. without him. Um, so I think, to be honest, I think it's fair that you may probably game plan for some of Chris Middleton. And now he's like, okay, we're not going to deal with him. Let's figure this out. Like, we, he's not going to be around. He's really their premier shooter, you know? Mm. So... Now they're really going to just have to focus on containing the big guys. And that's what it comes down to. Yeah, I mean, hey, one loss, you know, it's Only not one, the end of the right? world. It sucks because, you know, home field or home court advantage, you know, is taken a little bit by the Celtics losing this one. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not uh, I'm not terribly worried. If, if game two on um, – Tuesday plays out very similarly. Maybe we can start yeah, hitting the panic button. Yeah. yeah, but uh you know, we'll be we'll be here after game two, I'm sure. And uh yeah, Jack, other than that, where can they find you online? Definitely. Best place to find me is on Twitter and that's at Jack underscore Union. Go follow me there for NBA takes, MLB takes, NFL takes, the draft app and sweet. Um yes. you can follow my well. Instagram account at Jack Disc Golf for mm-hmm. Yeah. Um I'm fan i'm a fan we'll touch on that and buy a breakdown <laughs> yes especially if they sign uh honey badger which they're apparently aggressively yeah. pursuing him so could be good i'm a fan all right so uh yeah go follow jack there uh you can follow me on twitter at the fake bmr this bmarr channel is on twitter at we could get sport uh and at wg everything instagram we could get everything twitch at twitch.tv slash we get everything and on tiktok search we get sports search we get everything jack thank you so much for your time Of course, Brian. Thanks for having me. I'll see you all in the next one.